Hello, and welcome to the Underground Channel. I don't know if anybody's on here. Oh, okay, up there it says zero, zero. So I'm talking to myself, and um, I hope it's recording. So after I get done, I can just upload the video if it works out that way. I'm not sure. Other than that, I'd be talking to myself, just rambling to myself, unless somebody pops in here. And somebody has popped in here. Hello. Welcome to the Underground Channel. This is about living in pop-up campers, vans, trailers, how to survive, and how to live on $20 a week worth of food and still be full every night before you go to bed. So, uh, y'all be, um, be glad to hear comments down below if you're living this kind of life. Um, maybe you watch those videos from Bob who lives in a van. He's doing a great job out there. And I want to uh, test this channel. I just got live um, streaming on it. I'm inside a 1994 vintage Coleman camper. And I'll try to show you a little bit the way it looks like. And there we go. So, Hold on, let me turn this uh, heater off. It's very loud and it's very cold and rainy and snowy outside. So, welcome. I didn't think anybody was going to pop on here, really. I thought I was going to be talking to myself. Hopefully, it will record at the same time. Um, I live in Ohio and I'm getting ready to um, uh, live this lifestyle again. When I was young, I used to live in a camper, uh, a motorhome, a Tiagra, and um, the way it was, it was perfect for me. I mean, it was low cost. I didn't have to pay anything for lot rent or uh, have to pay for electric or sewer or anything because I worked at the campgrounds for my keep. I worked in the summer months as a lifeguard when I was young. Uh, of course, I can't swim now. Well, I probably could swim, but too old. But I also uh, uh, met a lot of people who was always traveling back and forth. So if you're still here, please leave a comment and let me know if you're living this kind of life or if you got some ideas or if you're just visiting. It'd be nice to get a comment. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get about four more hundred subscribers so I can get off the computer and on better cameras. It won't let me do live streaming unless I'm on, on the computer for some reason because I'm under a 1,000 subscribers. So please subscribe. Ah, somebody else came on here. Hello. Um, I'm going to teach how to survive, how to guard your stuff, even when you're not there, how to guard your, gu uh, your campsite. Because I'm ex-military and I have a lot of knowledge on how to set up uh, little things around your camp that will keep bears and wildlife about 200 feet away. And if somebody gets too close to your uh, campsite, um, I will teach you um, how to keep your stuff safe so when you come back, your generator is still there or nobody's broke into your camper and things like that. If you're living in a tent, uh, David sent me a question about living in a tent, how to keep it warm because his heater does not keep it, him and his family warm enough. Uh, I will teach that, uh, how to keep it warm for about three days, and then you have to, like, recharge your rocks. Um, and you got to know your rocks and how to build your bed system underneath your tent so you're not burning yourself or exploding the wrong kind of rocks. So uh, it says I still got one person on here, but I'm not sure. So unless you give me a comment, uh, I guess this ain't a two-way talking thing. <laughs> but um, I'm in a pop-up camper and I'm getting ready to um, do videos. A lot of people is that has broken cables or springs or the top don't go up or it don't go down. Or in my case, the support arms, uh, whoever owned this camper first or before me, 
uh, parked it on a hill and it broke. So I'll teach how to get the roof up so that you don't have to um, uh, take it off like all these videos showing. You got to get four or five people to pick it up, turn it over to rebuild the roof. Well, mine doesn't really need to be rebuilt. I got one patch I got to do where the rod uh, plate came off because it was um, plastic and it dry rotted since uh, 1984. Um, but for a 1984 vintage um, Coleman uh, pop-up, it's in pretty darn good shape. And I got to restring the cables and, and the springs after... I get the posts supported on this end. These ones down here are still good. So uh, I see I still got one person watching. Could you leave a comment so I can see if that works, please? I'd appreciate it because um, I'm trying to get to my regular cameras and I can't do it because it says devices are not allowed unless you're on your computer and doing it through desktop. So it won't even let my phone do it. Or if you know any way that I can change it around and and use GoPro, but I think you got to have a thousand subscribers up front. So um, David sent me a message or a text or whatever you call that down below, comments uh, about how to keep his tent warm. And I'm going to answer that on my next live video or just upload a video on how to take certain rocks and how to build them around your fireplace outside and get them toasty hot. They will hold heat for up to two days if you got about a five pound rocks. Now, you can't sleep on rocks. And um, and. If you get the wrong kind of rocks, they'll explode like a small grenade and they could hurt you. So you got to know your rocks and river rocks are generally OK. The big round ones, you don't want to use limestone rocks or anything like that or sand rocks because you can hurt yourself. And um, that's basic common, common knowledge. If you're uh, wondering why I'm slurring. I'm recovering from my second stroke and my heart attack. So, and that's why I've chose to go back to the normatic or, or what you call it, off grid living, or um, some people call it um, boondocking. And I used to do that when I was young and I was by Wright Pat Air Force Base, but I didn't go into it blind. I um, worked at Wright Pat Force Base. Uh, Air Force Base. I was a WGA, excuse me. And um, so I had money coming in. And plus, I worked as a lifeguard on my days off when I wasn't working at the right Air Force Base. So my campsite was literally free. And I lived there all year round. And I had money. And and build a skirt around my Tiagra motor home so that cold air wouldn't get underneath them and freeze the pipes. I had a little boiler that I went underneath the camper and attached um, these uh, real thin water hoses that you can get like at Lowe's, Walmart. And I, it's like a tape. And actually you tape it through your floorboards in your camper or even into your um, driving part and run that boiler and all it does is circulates and it ran off from propane so that made natural heat come up never had to really use the furnace unless it was like 20 below on a freak storm or something like that so it says i got one person <laughs> and i'm um, i would like to see if my live chat is working could you please whoever you are just say hi or something so i can see if if my live chat is working and um i you uh, if you watch any of my other videos i used to teach how to program cody's the cody you know so you could watch movies for free and stuff like that but over the years cody's pretty much obsolete so when i do teach people i teach people how to um 
get over 2,000 channels, uh, TV, movies, anything you want to watch, sports, everything, and any movie you'd ever want to watch, and cut the cord to satellite bill or cable bill, like Spectrum was charging me over $250 a month just to get the one channel I wanted because it was in a package up there and the channel lower packages didn't have that channel unless you paid the higher thing. You know what I'm talking about. And uh, I keep looking over here to see if whoever's watching drops me out a little comment in the comments, live comments. And like I said, this is just a test live video and my camera sucks. I'm on a Lenovo old computer that's like, oh, no, I'm on my HP. This one's my Lenovo. And the screen went out. And the only way I can use it is if I hook it up to the smart TV. Then it works good. And that's got all my editing for my TV studio, my green screens I used to teach people how to do, everything. <coughs> so um, this is just a test, and I'm rambling. So. Uh, I appreciate you being here, and um, and I'm just saying if it will record at the end. So, uh, oh, I just saw a microphone thing. My mic goes up and down. I'm just learning how to use the web system instead of the GoPros and or the better cameras and the microphone and everything. And um, uh, I used to have a TV studio where I was teaching people green screening too and things like that and booby traps <laughs> if you're into booby traps i teach people how to set booby traps to protect your perimeter even in your house because i'm ex-military but not to hurt somebody but put the fear of god in them <laughs> and um they're clever little things that you can get and somebody comes walking around in your backyard trying to steal your barbecue grill and they trip off one of them. They're going to be running real fast when you set off one of my booby traps. But they're harmless. They're just very, very loud when they go off. They keep uh, bears away. They keep deer out of your yard. Or even rabbits. But depending on where you put your uh, traps at. And you just go and reload them. And I build them with caps. Remember the little cap guns you used to get when you was um, a kid? with the guns and stuff. Well, I use military grade caps and um, they're very loud. One sounds like a shotgun. One sounds like a, a 22, um, a Marlin, uh, a Marlin uh, Winchester rifles, anything. They're different caps for different sounds. So are you even interested? <laughs> uh, it's kind of strange talking to yourself and I'm up on 13 minutes and 22 seconds. But I follow Bob. I don't know if you follow Bob uh, living in a van and stuff. I've done that too. I've, I've built tiny houses out of school buses, um, campers. I used to work for Palm Harbor, Palm Harbor Mobile Homes. And um, I'm slurring my speech again. Sorry. And um, basically, I'm teaching people not only how to live, this kind of lifestyle, but to be happy at it and not to let it be so much as a, um, like you feel like you're homeless or something and to make it where everybody tells you, you can't do that, but you make the choice. And if you make the choice, you're more happier with it. And, and it's much easier. And then you're freeing up all that money, um, $675 for rent. That stays in your pocket living this lifestyle. $300 for electric bill every month. That stays in your pocket. Um, $75 a month for your water bill. That all adds up. That's called, I call that freeing money. Because um, and the reason why I'm doing it is a choice, yes. But I'm in a have-to situation because I've already had a heart attack and two strokes. And thank the Lord, he's brought me back up. Uh, I still numb on my left side, but my first heart attack 
was my right side. And then they scared me at the OSU hospital and told me that they have to do open heart surgery immediately. Or I'm going to be dead in two days. And I, oh, that puts the fear of God in you. And so I had a Philippine trauma nurse and I speak her language, but I didn't let her know I could speak her language. And the heart surgeon was a Chinese doctor at OSU Heart Clinic Intensive Care. <coughs> and it turned out that working over 90 hours a week <laughs> kind of did me in. And I wasn't as young as I was, but I owed at that time $64,000 to the government and they're holding my visa so I can't get to my family in the Philippines or get the rice fields back open after we've been hit with uh, a category six hurricane is what the United States, if they had a scale that high, they would have called it. It swallowed up the whole country last year and then it hit Japan and, and devastated Japan. But also we've had several earthquakes. It's done a, a lot of damage to uh, all of my family and my uh, mine and, and my family's house in the Philippines. And then just a couple of months ago, if you was watching on the news, we get hit by a volcano. Oh my goodness, that thing was huge. But it did a lot of damage and and we're hurt puppies over there right now. My family needs me over there. But when I had my stroke, when we got uh, our first earthquake there that damaged our house and took most of the top floor off and now it rains in the house so my family has to take tarps put over all the electronics and in their beds so they can sleep while it's raining because it just comes in and pretty much all my family over there are poor and they can't get the rice fields back open because I'm not there and they're having a hard time being fed and we're not talking you know, just four or five people. We're talking hundreds, cousins. Uh, everybody lived around the, uh, the volcano, devastated. <coughs> the ash put so much weight on their, what we, I call 10, 10 houses. They're made out of sheets of metal, most of them. And then they're like ovens because it's always 80 to 100 degrees every day, even on Christmas, all year around there. But uh, so I was working, I do body work, I paint cars, I do um, custom detailing, I reskin campers that have been in accidents, uh, I remodel inside campers that they want their stuff inside to be different, so I'll build their cabinets and stuff. This is what I did when I lived at the campgrounds in my spare time and made bukus of money because somebody swiped, swiped a tree and ripped the side of their camper out and and nobody knew how to put a skin on but uh i'd order the skin and put it back on the camper and, and it just looked like a factory did it so i'm going to be teaching that on my live channel too and and teach people how to make money uh living this kind of lifestyle and how to work their way up to get a motor home and a cargo trailer and and to be able to survive and live and not have to pay uh, anything unless you're moving to a different campsite, go to a boondocking site or something. And I teach people how to do it. Say like a lot of the people that uh, has messaged me um, in the past, um, they're on social security like I am and they only get so much. So how can they do this? Cause they won't really want to do this and uh and live a better life being free than being tied down to a house mortgage taxes property uh stuff and when something goes down you got to fix it and it's always 10 times more than what it would be in a camper at a, at a campsite that you can make your home and i watched a video last night of a woman who uh said there was a million people uh living in campers and stuff like that living that kind of life and 
technically she's way off on her number. He, uh, the way I was looking it up, and I just studied it a little bit, I got up to um, 3.9 million people that are not living in houses and live like this. But also, there's homeless people that build them a little tiny house out of um, skids. And they make them look nice inside. And they go find some places that nobody's around. And they live that way. And then the money that they're getting on Social Security or, or wherever they're working, they get back on their feet a lot much faster. Some of them go back to houses. And some of them decide to upgrade their living by going to a pop-up from a tent. And then from a pop-up, they work their way up to a motorhome. And then they get them a trailer. And then they're doing good. And they don't want to live back in the house because uh, you're out there. You got a campfire every night. Who doesn't love a campfire, right? <coughs> Excuse me. I've been working on this camper. And that's why I'm coughing right now. And my family hasn't been able to send me a box from uh, the Philippines that helps uh, uh, people with strokes or heart problems or coughing problems because they're outside working in the rain and snow like me. And I didn't want to take the roof off and do like everybody on YouTube and flip it over and then build it and then try to get that heavy thing back on because they're using two by sixes and it is heavy. They eventually get it done, but it's much faster. I build slides. I got four slides on the outside. And if you're interested in seeing them, it's dark now, snowing and raining back and forth. And it's a muddy mess outside because it's been doing it for days and literally no sun. So that's why I, uh, I kind of worked myself into a cold. <laughs> and But I usually don't get colds or get sick because I use certain roots from the Philippines and it builds your immune system up. And when I had my first stroke, our first heart attack, before my first stroke and second stroke, my right side was like my left side. I can't hardly use my left hand. My right side's like this. My legs all uh, not moving. I didn't have no feeling from here over, and that's the weirdest sensation you can ever feel. And um, and before I go on, I want to thank you for listening to me ramble like this. I appreciate it. And um, and I'm going to do those videos. So you, you be sure to subscribe because uh, you're going to, if you, you don't know when the AMP is going to go off, you know, or when this country is going to be attacked by another country. And I've got, I'm ex-military, like I told you. And um, It'll be there's some good survival things that I know that will teach a lot of people. But uh, but anyway, I got the slides on all four corners so that I can slide this up and down as I need to without the post or cranking it until I can get it all fixed or get the money to get some parts. But I'm going to fabricate it. I'll show you how I got it jacked up. I use the body jack that I use when cars have crashes. I'll turn this computer over. You see that long red pole up to the roof? That's a body jack. That's That jack is a piston long jack. You can go as tall as you want. You just keep putting uh, the rods in it. And then you get where you need that level. And you keep going up higher and higher. And then you go outside. And you put your supports up. That way the sliders hold, hold it from being windy. And then the hydraulic jack pumps it up. And then you go out and you put uh, cut your boards to get under the outside of the roof and put them under there so that you can put all the weight on the four boards. And then the sliders that go up and down uh, uh, keeps it keeps it all in straight line and everything. Now I got finally got it up. I can get under there and start uh, reconnecting the springs and the cables. And I got to fabricate a piece of metal. And put it up there so they don't pop or break. The plastic ones Coleman put in 1984 dry rotted and they broke. That's why the roof fell off when he parked it down the hill. But anyways, 
I'm going to teach, I'm going to do more videos, but they're going to be like recorded videos. And, um, once I can get off this, um, thousand, uh, subscribers to get above that, I'll have better cameras. I'll have green screens like I did before and a better studio. Cause I'm going to take one side of this camper and teach people how to turn that into a green screen make money on youtube in their campers that don't have a tv studio anywhere <coughs> and how to fix your camper how to guard your perimeter i want to teach all of that how if you have to live in a tent uh how to heat your rocks up build a bed out of dirt and then um take dry dirt and kind of grind it a little bit like sand so that you can put those rocks in there and then you put your bedroll over the top of that get in your sleeper uh sleeping bag you stay warm uh those rocks will stay warm and uh buried like that and generate heat into the dirt and uh and you can um be toasty warm and it could be a blizzard outside and you'll be toasty warm because those rocks will stay warm for uh let's see I I had the way I built mine, they stay warm for three days before I have to go build a big fire again and recharge them and get them real nice and hot. Trick is getting them from the fire inside your bed place where you got the dirt spread it out and you put your rocks in there and then you put the dirt over it because if you don't do that, you don't have no insulation and you, you wake up as Kentucky Fried Chickens next day like the next day. <laughs> Excuse me. But whoever you are, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could make YouTube two way. <laughs> then we could talk. And I wouldn't be just rambling. And I, I'm pushing 60. And uh, as soon as I can get my stuff from my box from um, my family in the Philippines, I think my left side will come back out of it. And, um, and make me healthy again with these roots and herbs that my family sends me um you can get a couple of those roots and things like um papaya um comes from the philippines or brazil uh they can't grow in the united states but they ship them and kroger sells papaya um and ginger you can get ginger root you make it like a tea you you take the root and chop it up in little pieces put it in a plastic bag and then take a hammer and mash it and you put it in a pot and boil it and and let it set for a couple of uh, a couple hours and then boil it again and then you get a strainer and a filter and you filter it into a cup take you one spoonful of raw honey and about a spoon of honey if you're coughing your head off like I am right now I wish I had it right now cuz cough syrup don't do nothing for me you take one drink the cough's gone instantly and it's good for your um um internal um organs and your um, circulatory system and what it does is uh if you do it for a long period of time it gets in there and cleans your arteries out and food and drug administration don't don't like that stuff and a lot of times they don't let certain things come into the united states that cures diabetes. I know I'm going to teach people how to cure diabetes if they come and shut me down or not. Um, I did this back in 1999, and the Food and Drug Administration came in like looking like uh, the Men in Black that movie, you know, with uh, who was that? Who played that Men in Black? Bruce Willis? No, um, Will Smith. I think it was Will Smith, and. Um, Henry Ford or Thomas Ford or whatever his name was. They looked like that coming into my house. And I had a makeshift laboratory because I'm uh, I'm into diseases like um, Ebola, um, Sudan, Martin, and, and the RS-84 strain that happened in um, Virginia. I was there for that. And, um, and when I was a kid, I, I caught Ebola. But 
as a kid, you don't know how to do anything. And then the doctors came in and um, I, they got me well again, but I didn't have the deadly, the most deadly um, virus of Ebola because it takes two viruses to make a de uh, deadly um, Ebola become airborne. Then you got less than, um, I think it's 14 hours is incubation. And then you start swelling up like a big balloon and you die a horrible death with that kind of Ebola. And in 1980, the government um, covered up um, a strain that broke out in um, Kinshaw Mountain, in which got into the United States eventually. And I don't know if you're as old as me or, or if you're young or whatever, because if you'd leave me a comment, I'd be able to know how to direct my um, conversation to you. But Ebola in 1980 uh, was first exposed to the United States. And instead of naming it Ebola Sudan RS-19 strain, they called it AIDS. And that's like the female side of the virus. Ebola Martin was the, uh, say, the male side of the virus. And it all come, all deadly viruses comes within one square mile from Kenshaw Mountain, Kenshaw Cave. And if you've been watching the CD reports, Ebola just broke out again, and they they can't stop it. And then they got another CD report that Corona is uh, on the loose and it's worldwide now, it's everywhere. And I'm gonna teach people how to survive that, how not to catch it. And, and if it becomes a pandemic in the United States, I'm gonna teach you how to kill the cells or the virus that's airborne before they get, get to you. And like I said, I'm ex-military, so um, I think it'll be profitable uh, whoever you are, if you um, uh, in your family subscribes to my channel, because I got a lot of knowledge that I have gained in 60 years. And I've been to college. I've been to um, uh, medical school. Um, I've been in the military. I've been to uh, not Kenshaw, but I've been to um, Wen Chai. Um, I broke a can, Torsha City, you know, I've been everywhere. So I know a lot of things <laughs> that I have obtained in my mind and my brain for 60 years. And, um, it's gotten me this far and I've helped a lot of people, but bad days are going to be coming. And, and this wake up call with this Corona and this Ebola is like the 1918 um, epidemic, um, the 1726 um, uh, epi or no, it's uh, 28, 1728 that they called the Black Plague. That's because they didn't have microscopes to know what they were looking at. And that was a form of Ebola back then. And then in 1821, you had. Uh, the disease, uh, not Lyme disease. Oh, I have to go look in my notebooks. <laughs> um, that rats was getting into um, people's food and it made a, a, I forget what they call that disease, but it killed over like 3 million people. I'm going to teach how to avoid all that. If you see my rocker or my camper moving around, it's not actually the camper. It's because I'm getting ready to work on the beds and re um, re um, fix the poles that holds the tent up. The wind's blowing the canvas around, <laughs> so I'm not swaying. It's the canvas, and I, I didn't have enough time to tighten it up and button up the hatch so cold air's in here. So I got my heater off to uh, not drown out the sound so you can hear me but i'm going to teach everybody that kind of stuff and it's stuff that you're going to need to know in the near future and 
uh, it's about time. World War III is going to break out anytime. It could happen while you're asleep. And uh, especially if the de uh, Democrats get their way, we, we'd be in war not too long. It wouldn't take a, but a heartbeat to be in war. And something has to happen. 7.6 billion people on this earth. This earth is too crowded. And I'm a firm believer in prophecy. I don't know if you're a believer in prophecy or God or anything, and I don't want to offend you, but I personally am. And when I was young, I thought my grandma and my mom was crazy. But, and they say, this stuff's going to happen. This stuff's going to happen. I go, oh, mom, that ain't going to happen in our lifetime. I watched a lot of stuff happen this, that has came to pass. And my mom always preaching the Bible. and and I read it, and then once it started happening, I got into it. So uh, uh, I hope I don't offend you, but God bless you, whoever you are. I still got one. I think I was up to three people, but they shut off immediately. So I guess I'm not giving out any good info. But it's a good test for me to know that this is working. Even on my junky computer, it's working. Cameras. The webcam is not so great. And at the end, I will see if it records and see how many people hits it. But I'm going to teach on this camper. I'm going to teach how to live out there. Um, I'm going to teach how to get away from the government so they have no control on you. And how to avoid the government when they do come to try with that new world census they're coming out with um, through NATO. And the UN, which in the past nine months, UN has been invading the United States. Look it up on YouTube. And the big super Walmarts, uh, um, not is it FEMA? I think it's FEMA. FEMA is buying all these super Walmarts and they're turning them into prisons. And you, you can see this stuff on uh, YouTube or the news. Just look up. Uh, FEMA, Walmart, and watch all those videos. It will scare you. It scares me, but I'm ready. I've been in the military, so I already know what to do and where to go and how to get out of the out of Dodge City. Well, I guess I lost you. So I'm going to see if this works or not. I'll stay here for a minute. Oh. Somebody popped back in. <laughs> Thought you left me. Did I lose you? Leave me a comment, um, please. Right over there. Um, if you can't find it, just hit the live comments on your screen below there somewhere. It says live comments. And then you can type in uh, a comment and I'll get it live so that I can like to meet you, whoever you are. And see what kind of things you're interested and maybe you might have some good advice to give me to um, get above that thousand um, subscribers um, I think I just looked at it I'm like up to 656 so I'm getting closer or maybe I don't know I have to look again it doesn't say on here anywhere but uh, what time is it getting to be? I'll show you my honey, my Filipino family. <coughs> Oops. Okay. Get it where you can see her. And I should be calling her. I don't know if you can see. That's my Filipino wife. She's back in the Philippines. Me and her uh, met at the convention center when I worked for Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Blair and um, Lou Ferrigno and the actors of um, that movie. What do they call that? The Hoblets. They were at the convention center doing book signing and doing uh, comic books and, and doing an interview with the people during the Arnold Schwarzenegger um, thing that we have in Columbus, Ohio every year. And I, I work for him. 
um, uh, doing setup, a little bit of security, hydraulic stages, and and making sure the stages don't crash because one year this girl was picking up a car motor and, and um, the, the thing, uh, the platform crashed. Not for my doing because I hadn't worked there yet. I was the next person they hired to uh, that knows about stages and hydraulics and stuff and how to jack things up and make them strong. But uh, that girl got pretty hurt because that car motor must have weighed at least 300 some pounds and she lifted it up like a man. So, but uh, I met all those people that do the conventions and then other conventions I worked was a um, like around the world thing that they do with food and stuff. And my Filipino friends introduced me to um, Rosemary. That's my girlfriend or my wife now. And um, we have a son that is, he's in, he's in the Philippines too. Um, uh, he's three and a half years old. Cause that's the last time uh, we was at the uh, convention center and they had to fly back cause they was here with a group. She's, her real name is Rosemary Casalen Piamonte. And I have a lifetime full of bad women. I finally got a good one towards the end of my life. <laughs> and she is, couldn't ask for a better woman. And that little girl was trying to hold. She only comes up to my shoulder. I'm 5'9". And this is how tall she is. She looks like she's 22. Uh, most people guess her around 20, between 22. But she's actually um 49 years old and <laughs> believe it or not and again that's what the herbs and roots is. they eat over there and they eat a lot of rice rice is good for your skin and <clears throat> and papaya if you eat enough of it it kind of rege uh, regenerates genes and it's that particular gene that causes the aging of your skin prematurely and I have a my skin is aging because I smoke uh, I smoke to keep calm because my first heart attack I got in a big old fight with the Muslims that I was working for and, um, and it didn't work out and my um, um, Filipino girlfriend at that time knew how to speak Arabic <laughs> and they didn't think anybody in the United States could speak Arabic, much less a Filipino. And they were talking about me and what they were going to do to me. And she came out and told me and we got in a big old fight because they was wanting this piece of property <laughs> and I wasn't, I wasn't getting rid of it, but they tried to burn me out of it. And I had a body shop there where I was doing cars like crazy, painting them and doing body work and, and collisions. And I was getting into shipping cars overseas to like Africa, Dominican Republic. And there's big money on it. You can buy a car for <coughs> $2,000 at the auction. You ship it over there. You, you sell it for like 25000 And if you do a whole cargo, rent a whole cargo thing and have it shipped and you got 10 cars on it. That's a lot of money. And I just started getting into that before, before we got into that big fight. That's the cause of my first heart attack. That's what caused my actual heart attack. Cause I, they had me working like 90 hours and a week and I'm not getting much sleep and I'm trying to keep my body shop going. And it just, I worked myself almost to death, overstrained my heart and, and then the stress on top of it. So I thank you for being here, listening to my rambling. I see I got one person <laughs> it's been on here all this time and uh, other people coming in and going, just popping in and going. So um, I wish you could drop me a comment or some way we could communicate. 
we had um, sideband radios or ham radios. Uh, we could talk that way too, and and free chat skipping. <laughs> but uh, I do got to get this heater on for a minute. I don't know if you could hear me if I turn it on. It's just only takes about ninety seconds to heat this camper up. If you could bear with me, I'm gonna hit it to um, thaw me out. <laughs> it's uh, raining ice outside that's how cold it is and it's really windy and just enough to heat it up and then my little heater under the table is bringing heat all around the table so there you can probably hear it and the heat comes around the table kind of keeps me warm for a while until I have to heat the whole place back up so I can feel the heat is starting to work its way down I got a torpedo jet heater, like 30,000 BTU, overkill. <laughs> but I would wish I could meet you or just chat. I'm going to send you a chat. If you could just give me a thumbs up that you received it. I'm going to type it out now. I'm going to say hi and send it to you. Hope you get it. There's nobody's chatted yet. There, it popped up on the chat board. Can you give me a thumbs up? Or anything to let me know that you got the, the high? The high? So. And maybe you want to remain on. Unless, that's okay. Because maybe I know you. <laughs> I know it's probably one of my subscribers. Because they're, they've been waiting for me to come back on and teach them how to get over 2,000 channels on their TV. And I want to wait till I get my studio built. Because I'm going to live in this thing. So... Probably this end down here, the queen size bed. I want to turn that all into green screen. And uh, then I can do the videos like I did, having uh, green screen behind me, like the weatherman says here. He's always looking at the computer, moving his hands, telling you the weather, kind of like that. Or the old movies that used to have green screens on the old western. Okay, it's about 95 in here already. There, you should be able to hear me pretty good. And you hear this? That's ice, ice balls hitting the top of the camper. I love that sound. It's like uh, I, when I go to sleep at nights now to tune the world out and all the problems they're trying to give me. I, I turn the YouTube on my big screen TV in my bedroom, and I got uh, the titles, The Haunted House with Thunderstorms and Rain and Wind and th uh, Fireplace. All the kinds of sounds that put you to sleep fast. And, um, uh, and then on my phone, I go to YouTube and put on my phone like last night, I listened to the book of Revelations and sleep to it. And then the next book will come up. Usually after Revelations, it goes to Genesis and then works its way automatically. And if you like that kind of stuff, the way you look up the, uh, the best Bible verses that you can listen to um, while you sleep or just listen to them when you awake, the whole Bible is narrated by um oh i can't even think of his name right now oh i'll just look it up real fast for you because i always got it saved he's the best narrator M and charleston hessen are the best two readers okay youtube okay i was trying to video on this because it's a better camera and I forgot to shut it off. So, 
cut that off. I go to my library, go to my history, and it should pop right up. Should be right in there. There. Alexander Scrooby. Now he's excellent for reading books and sounds really good. You would you would probably like him if, if you're want to listen to the Bible uh, instead of sitting there and trying to read it. I don't see so good, so I listen to it. Um, I wanted to see what time it is. It's ten twenty four, and. See if my honey's on there yet. Rosemary. See? Rosemary Castellan Piamonte. But in the United States, her last name is Myers. But the Philippines will not recognize marriage over there unless they go through this brucatic, uh, brucatic, how do you say that word? Red tape. Uh, and everything. Uh, uh, let me send her a message. And then I'll be right back with you. May all my Ishanandi and I, Mahakita, Sigi, Ingna. I just sent her a message. And then I sent her a little, I love you too. That's pretty cool how Messenger, you can put little motion cons on there. I don't know if you can see it, but I sent her that too. Oh, she gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> She's busy cooking. When she says cooking, she says cooking. <laughs> I love her accent. But uh, I still don't see no... Um, um, comment message on the live chat if you left one on the the video side or the channel i'll go back and see um so tonight was just a test um with my phone is a better camera uh, i've already uploaded a couple videos about this camper i got it for a hundred bucks so I'm going to teach people how to fix it because it is broke and and how to live in them comfortably and how to stay warm in them and uh, how to change the faucet so you're not having to pump it and to actually have a on and off faucet working from a 12 volt pump instead of because you can't wash both of your hands doing this. So if you got a 12 volt water pump, Hook it up to your solar or your generator or to your uh, inverter inside the camper. Then you just turn it on like a regular house faucet. But I'm also going to put a bigger water tank in here. This one's about a five-gallon one. I'm going to put about a 40-gallon water tank under what I'm sitting. And then you can boondock, you know, if you're rationing your water, a couple of... Um, a couple of weeks and then you've got your i use bottle water um for, for regular drinking water but you can go to walmart and get one of those um hot and cold waters and when you're traveling like in this trailer you just take the jug off turn it over slap the cap on unplug it lay it down sideways it's about this wide about a foot wide and when you got it plugged in you put your water jug back on top of it and you got your coffee water and you got ice cold water. <laughs> so, and that saves a lot of problems. If you don't have a refrigerator, you got cold and work, uh, drinking water and hot drinking water. So I'm going to teach people how to use a jug that automatically gives you the hot and cold water with those Walmart things that you can buy and it heats up and it cools down your water. To where it's nice and cool and that saves you from buying money for ice to have ice water if you want ice water and i teach people how to make ice no videos teach you how to make ice and how to do it sufficiently in a camper 
And see y'all, I'm up to two people watching me now. Woo! Um, I'm gonna teach you how you can do this in a tent. And uh, you can get this off from eBay for about 80 bucks. And the thing all it does is make cube eyes. Cube eyes. And it'll make up to six pounds uh, of ice. Uh, I think it's per hour or every two hours. So why buy ice bags of ice when you go get an $80 machine and its only job is just to make ice? People are wasting their money. I bought one, got stolen. I bought actually three of them. Uh, a girl that was pregnant was living in a tent and she um, um, didn't have no electricity around. So um, we got her a rollout solar panel and a car battery and a, um, I think it was a 200 watt inverter because the machine used like um, 30 watts or yeah, 30 watts. So with that, she was able to run that in the middle of summer and make ice for her. And, and, uh, she was able to drink water. I taught her, how, uh, I got her one of those water bottles too. And she had hot and cold water in the middle of the woods with no electricity. Now I'm going to teach you all that kind of stuff and how to generate electricity out of an old alternator. I'm gonna teach that too. And how to make the alternator um, not have to have anything to power it. I'm gonna teach that. An alternator will put out enough electricity um, to uh, run a small converter, inverter. But if you want a bigger inverter, um, you would need um, uh, a bigger um, battery bank. One battery wouldn't do it, but it would probably run one thing for about an hour that it would be an emergency before it would have to be recharged again. But if you got four lithium batteries and you get like eight kilowatt hours on each battery, that's that's enough to run a house. So if you got them on your frame on your on your RV, you don't ever have to plug up to sure power. <laughs> And if the sun's hidden, they got solar panels now that will generate electricity even when it's nighttime. Those are real expensive. They're just coming out. But um, a windmill fixed up on a pole that you can crank up will generate enough amperage to um, charge your batteries up. And then if you, I will teach how to make a bicycle rim into a windmill and you can just attach it to your generator from your car and it'll produce the 12 volts. If you need more than 12 volts, I'm going to teach how you take, take the casing off and put magnets in the inside of it and go around it and then pop it back in. It'll put out raw power, electric, easy. If you're not mechanically inclined, you can buy them off eBay for about 150 bucks already done. And, um, and you got to watch yourself because it will, it, there's enough electricity come out of it, it can kill you. But, well, I guess I'm not going to get a text from you or what they call a comment. I'm going to ramble a little bit longer to see if anybody else joins. And at the end of the cigarette, I'm going to cut off. So be sure to subscribe. Uh, check out some of my old videos I did before I had my first heart attack. Or right after I had my first heart attack, I should say. And that's been about close to four years ago. So watch them. If you're still running your Cody. Um, you can watch those videos, but Cody is obsolete and it's up and down and buffing all the time. And so I just quit programming them and building USB sticks to run TV systems on the USB sticks by converting them from files 
to um how do they call that word from files to um portable apps that's what i call them portable apps which changes the the um, coding and writing in a usb stick that where you download your pictures or take pictures and keep your files on so you can plug it in any computer i turn them into running portable apps and buy the usb sticks that already have the speed chip in it and i actually made cody where it didn't buff on those so and um i'm on late because i didn't get out of church until like probably almost uh 8 30. so that's the reason why i decided instead of actually doing a film and trying to edit in my video editing and put all the fancy stuff in it i just decided to go live and and i tried it and it wouldn't work i said i wasn't qualified on my phone but it also sent me a message that I am qualified to use it on a computer through um, a desktop. So, and that's how I got on here and it worked. It's just the, the stupid camera is fuzzy and I don't know if my microphone's clear. I guess it probably is clear because um, you've been on here all this time and, um, and I appreciate it. Uh, at least I don't feel so lonely right now. Oh, I'm so lonely. I could just cry. <laughs> so thank you for being here. And as soon as I'm done with the cigarette, uh, I'm going to cut it off and cut the big heater off. And um, <coughs> then I'm going to I'm gonna probably pack these computers under the car, uh, phone. They should um, be safe that way. And if anybody tries to come up here and rob me, I got two dogs out there they got to contend with. And they let me know anything is messing around here. And I'm trying to get away with a free dog. It's a, uh, it's a, um, oh, how do they call that dog? It's a um, Australian Shepherd. They're nice dogs, good hunting dogs and good lap dogs, just and good with kids, but don't ever spank a kid in front of a dog <laughs> he uh one of these siberian or why a siberian died um australian shepherds and they're very very protective of their owners and their families especially kids so um there was a lady out here one time and that lady was yelling at those kids just yelling and screaming i've never seen nothing like it and they weren't really doing nothing. So she gets mad at the kid and jumps out, pulls the kid out and starts whopping her on the butt. And my dog took off after her and grabbed her arm, didn't bite her, just grabbed it and pulled the arm away and was trying to walk to make the lady leave the kid. <laughs> that was the darnest, cutest thing I ever seen and didn't break her skin. It's just very protective of kids. and. She was here for me to do to give her an estimate on doing body work. She uh, ran into one of those uh, yellow poles at a Walmart <laughs> and made her trunk and her back end of her car into a V. So I used that jack I showed you earlier to pump it back all out, form it all back up so she could at least shut her trunk. But, uh, well, I don't know how to get an answer from you. At the top of the screen here, I don't know if it's on your device or not. It says thumbs up. I don't know if I can click thumbs up or not. Uh, will it let me do my own thumbs up? I don't think so. Nope. Maybe it's thumbs up uh, down below and then it uh, registers. Right now, I just see the emblem of um, uh, what it's supposed to be people and number one. Sometimes it'll go up to, I think the highest was four, but they didn't stay. I guess I wasn't the kind of content they wanted to listen to or see an old man rambling, testing out uh, live video. 
um, or live streaming. But uh, I'm going to get ready and shut this off here in a few minutes. If you find a way to leave me a message somehow on any of my um, videos or channels, just say, hey, I was on live video with you. And that way I know that it was working. And and then when I get my uh, camper fixed, I'm going to turn that into a green screen down there and get uh, the regular camera so I can do different angles. You know, I know how to do all that. I got the video editing um, software to boost it up. Uh, if I wanted to, I could put music in there and stuff. I'm not into all that fancy stuff, but pop it a little, you know, so that us baby boomers are not blown away from all that stuff they keep putting in there, in their videos. So I'm going to call it a good night. God bless you for uh, listening to this rambling, all this hour and six minutes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> We've been on here for an hour and six minutes. So, and. Maybe someday I'll meet you. Maybe we'll be at a campgrounds or maybe on my channel. Hopefully you will subscribe because when I start actually doing the real videos like Bob and them, I, I can do it better than they do because um, they they just using the cameras on and I will edit it and make it, you know, pop for you and uh, keep people interested long enough to listen to what it's about or at least read the description. So, yeah, I'm going to call it a night. God bless you. Thank you for listening to an old man rambling. And hopefully I'll see you down the road. So, toodaloo. Have a nice night.